So you guys are selecting which literary work or non-literary texts you're going to use for your higher level essay. And some of you have said to me um, when conferencing about this, Mr. Frank, I don't know what I'm going to say about that text. And the response is, good. Uh, if you do know what you want to say about it, that may be more of a rant. That's great for your blog or for Twitter, uh, but it may not be using the methodologies of the discipline. So you, you have your text, you select a particular aspect or what the subject guide calls a line of inquiry. And the subject guide says that you can use those seven central concepts um, that those may be a helpful starting point for you to generate or determine um, the topic, the aspect, the line of inquiry. That's fine. Use those seven set central concepts if they help you. Um, you can also look at the handout we looked at in class on methodologies in the discipline. That can also give you an idea of how to develop a line of inquiry. Um, once, you, once you settle on that, you're going to reread the text uh, through the lens of that Let's just say aspect right now. Aspect is kind of a useless word, but aspect. So you reread the text through that lens, and that's what will generate your data set. So uh, when you're looking back at that work, um, I have one student who's looking at um, metamorphosis, for example, in Angela Carter and, and that particular aspect of the text. So as he rereads the text, any example of metamorphosis or anything that's uh, relevant to that, uh, he's going to pull aside. Right. Um, and you might you might take each of those uh, instances of evidence, write them on a note card. That'd be the old school way to do it. Notice what's going on in terms of content and form uh, and then set that aside. So by the time you finish reading that work, you're going to have 12 or 15 or 20 uh, note cards. That's your data set. You have to generate that data set. Uh, once you have that data set, of course, you're going to analyze it. So what does that mean? So two analogies I find myself using. Um, one is that you are like a murder detective solving a case, right? So you take the data, you take the clues, you take the evidence, you spread it out on the desk. You need to uh, exercise flexible thinking. You have to be open-minded, right? You have to see alternatives that may not uh, be apparent at first. You have to be curious and you have to be conscientious. So you need that kind of big picture thinking. But you also need, of course, close reading. Close reading is sort of one of our uh, most important things that we do in language and literature, close reading. Um, and that is my second analogy. Um, so we have the murder detective, but also um, you're like a biologist, right, who's, who's taking a specimen and putting it under a microscope. You're not sure what you're going to find there. Um, and... You know, that's important. The assumption is you don't know what you will find. So you've read the story. You know what happens. You understand characters, themes, all that stuff. Or if we're working with the non-literary text, you understand those elements of form, uh, audience, and purpose, those kinds of things. Uh, but when you look closely at one aspect, when you take that aspect and put it under a microscope, you're not entirely sure what you will find. You may have an idea. And if you do, that's fine. You may think of that as a hypothesis. Don't be too attached to that hypothesis. You may find that your hypothesis was you know, valid in some way, but there's something else that you weren't originally seeing. Now, if, <laughs> if you have a hypothesis, it turns out to be the case, one thing I would ask you is uh, to look back at that hypothesis, to look back at what you're thinking and see, is this too self-evident from the start? Uh, and it may be that uh, you, know, you end up developing a thesis that's completely clear uh, not only to, to every DP student who looks at that text, reads that text, but also maybe ninth and 10th graders, maybe even middle school students. Um, start with that assumption that you're not sure what you're going to find. This means that you'll need to adjust your question as necessary, right? You may think that you are looking at, at X and realize actually you're looking at Y. That's fine. Uh, that's all part of the process uh, of discovery, of inquiry, um, of being open-minded and engaging in the methodology of the discipline. Now, this higher level essay has high transfer value. What I mean by that is that um, this is something, uh, th this task is something that you'll do again and again at university. Whereas something like the I.O., uh, you may go through four years of university and never do another kind of oral um, that's similar to the IA. The higher level essay, you will do that dozens or hundreds of times in your classes in different kinds of disciplines. An academic essay 
uh, with a clear focus and purpose is, <laughs> is one of the most important kinds of things that you will do at university. So that's why you're working on this now. And I highly encourage you to make the most of it uh, and to really learn what this process is like. Um, when you read the IB examiner's report, you realize that the aim of a task like this is, very ambitiously, knowledge creation. Your HL essay is not something that you can just Google, right? <laughs> you can't find it on Sparknotes or those other kinds of internet sites uh, to help students understand um, what they've read. Um, this task is not something you can Google. You are selecting a text, you are selecting a methodology or an aspect or a focus or a line of inquiry, and you're looking very carefully at that, generating data, analyzing that data, and organizing that into a focused essay. The two examples that we saw, so knowledge creation, right? You're, the IB actually expects you somehow to create knowledge, which is very ambitious of them. Uh, but the two examples that we looked at, uh, one about the female characters in Tim O'Brien's novel. Now, I don't know if you've read that novel, but only about 5%, 7% of the ink in that novel is dedicated to those female characters. In other words, it's not at all obvious to look at the novel from that particular line of inquiry, you know, uh, with that particular focus or from that particular lens, whatever, kind of mixing these metaphors now. Um, it's not at all obvious. The student has chosen a recognized methodology and applied it to a text they read in class. When they did that, new insights presented themselves, right? When they put that under the microscope, they saw things that they didn't see uh, before. The same is true for the Care Bears essay, right? These papers both scored well, uh, in part because they moved beyond uh, what is self Evident. And they used methodology and a clear focus to do that.